happen tomorrow but I'm glad I know who's got tomorrow in his hand. Amen. Amen. All right, I'm starting segment three of this sermon, Working While It's Day. Reading from John, the ninth chapter and the fourth verse. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. Amen. We know the night is coming. But in Joel, the second chapter, beginning in the 12th verse, this segment is called, The Lord Will Do Great Things. Joel chapter 2, verse 12 Therefore also now, saith the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart and with fasting and with weeping and with mourning, and rend your heart and not your garments, and turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness, and he repented and it repenteth him of the evil. Who knoweth if he will return and repent? And leave a blessing behind him and a meat offering and a drink offering unto the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sanctify a fast. Call a solemn assembly. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation. Assemble the elders. Gather the children and those that suck the breast. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. Let the priest of the the ministers of the Lord weep between the porch and the altar and let them say, Spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thine heritage to reproach that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, Where is their God? Then will the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people. Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto the people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and ye shall be satisfied therewith. I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen, but I will remove far off from you the northern army, and will drive him into the land barren and desolate, with his face toward the east sea, and his hinder part toward the utter, utmost sea, and his sting shall come up, and his ill savor shall come up, because he hath done great things. Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. I wonder if you feel like I do this morning, that you really want the Lord to do some great things, even in our land. Where people have turned away from God. Listen to the answer. People want to know what the answer is. I'll tell you. It's right in the word of God. It's always been in the word of God. And he said. Rend your heart. Not your garment. Don't want you ripping your clothes. He wants you to rip your heart open. Pour out your soul to him. He said. Turn unto the Lord your God. For he is gracious and merciful slow to anger and of great kindness and repenteth him of the evil. You know, I don't think people really know how to pray through anymore. They don't know how to pray for revival anymore and hunger and thirst after God anymore. It's been a long time since I've seen people really get serious about serving God. That's the important way that we have of finding him when it becomes important to us to serve him with all our heart, to seek after his will. We can't seek our own will. We got to seek his will. And look what he says. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify fast. You would think in Zion they knew how to find the Lord, wouldn't you? Because that was a nation brought out of the land of Egypt to serve God and they had received the law. But you can receive all the law you want to. 
until you get the Lord in your heart and you get His mercy on your life, you really don't understand what it means to serve God. Laws and commandments never make us righteous before God. It's a willing heart and a loving heart to serve Him and to love your neighbors is what will make a difference in your life. And until we do that, we'll never see the change. We have some like 435 legislators and 100 senators and a president and a vice president and like 12 or 20, I don't know how many cabinet members he's got, got heads of the departments all over the place. We got people in government in Washington, in every state capital in America. We've got them all in every county. We have county seats in every state. We have cities of, of, of every city of mayor, and yet we cannot legislate righteousness, can we? People want to do right and treat their neighbor right, they'll do it. If they don't want to and it's not in their heart, they'll take advantage of everybody they can. And you know, that's not God's way. It's not God's will that any should perish, but all come to repentance. And he said, do this. Gather the people, sanctify the congregation. Assemble the elders, gather the children and those that suck the breast. Let the bridegroom come out of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. He's saying there is no excuse not to serve God. There's no person exempted from serving God. We've all got that duty. And we've got to learn how to call on him out of a sincere heart. You know, God sees our heart. He knows whether or not we really want to love him. And if you really want to love him and you want his mercy, read his word and you'll understand it. He said, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Yes. There's a difference between mercy and grace. Mercy you obtain by being merciful. Grace is a treasure. You find it. And where do you find it? You find it in the field of God. You don't buy just the little segment where grace is found. You buy the whole field where the treasure is. In other words, you take on God to live for him according to his will, not according to our own will. We serve him. We serve him with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And we do everything we can to live for him and please him. You know, there's so many illustrations in the world today that teaches us how we went wrong with God. But it's all still a personal relationship with the Lord. He wants to be personally your God. And he said, we must be born again. Nicodemus was a man trained in the all the laws of Moses. He knew every rule, every law, every flactory they had in their garments, every little statement they made. He knew it all. But he still didn't understand how to be saved. And he said to Jesus, he said, what, what are we going to do? He said, you must be born again. He said, how in the world can we be born again? He said, that which is born of flesh is flesh. But that's what, which is born of spirit is spirit. God wants to reach out into the depths of our heart and get us to make a change and a commitment to him in our life. We must be born again. So we got to do the works of him. And what are the works of the Lord? Believe on him who he has sent. What's it say in Hebrews 11th chapter? For without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. We need some diligence. We need some due diligence. 
in seeking the Lord our God. You see, if we do these things, we shall never fall. Add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge temperance, to temperance godliness, to godliness patience, to patience brotherly kindness, to brotherly kindness charity. If you do these things, you shall never fall. You see, we read the scripture, we'll understand what it means to serve God. But if we fail to serve God and fail to read his word, it's like we don't care. If you leave your Bible laying on the nightstand and you turn the TV on all the time 24-7, where is your seeking God? Where can you say to your own self, I've really sought the Lord? I want you to answer that question to your own liking. Answer that question to your own satisfaction of your conscience. Know this. If your heart condemn you, God is greater than your heart and knoweth all things. But if your heart condemn you not, then you have confidence toward God. I didn't say all these things to try to hurt you. I said them to try to lift you up in love and let you know what it means to let God do great things in your life. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your will. No, oh, Lord, I'm so glad that when I prayed that day, Lord, help me. I need your help no matter what the cost. And you told me, he said, think about it. At any cost. And I thought of that scripture that said, God's not willing that any should perish, but all come to repentance. And I said, God, if it's in your will, I'm going to take it. And oh Lord, I've tried to live true to that. Lord, you've been my help and my strength and my stay. I'm not saying this to be proud and exalted above others, but try to help us along the way to get closer to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I want to play one more song. It says, it's my desire. And truly, that's what I want to Say today, it's my desire to serve the Lord.